Tell me, comrade, do you wish to fight in the revolution? Chelsea, I text you now with comfort in my heart, knowing that you are safe and at home, and in the loving arms of our bull, Tyrone. When I initially joined up with the Communist Freedom People's Armies of the Revolution, I knew that this may be the last time I saw you. Fighting has been intense on the front. Our Soy Boy Battalion has taken heavy casualties since the onslaught of this campaign. And across the trench line, the Giga Chad Battalion has moved in and has been shouting culturally insensitive things at us nonstop. What's it like being on the losing side, you cock? That's culturally insensitive! Douchebag! I fear for my own safety, knowing that the end may be around any corner, oblivion awaiting me. And the worst part is, is that I fear I'll never see the woman I've come to love so much, or her bull that I've come to learn to admire so greatly. I know that prayer has been considered hate speech and outlawed, so think of me instead. Think of your loved one, Carl, who fights for you so bravely. For Chelsea. You must be the new guy. Welcome to the Soy Boy Battalion. My name's Carl. Nice to meet you. Oh, soy rations? Oh, we've been out of those for, for months. Just keep your head down. Uh, this is a, a tough part of the trench right here. Yeah, when it first kicked off, the, the soy lint supplies just plummeted. I just say, mind your P's and Q's around here. The commander's a real hard ass. There's some boys of the 69th Ship Post Brigade on the other side of this trench. Hey, comrade. Do you want to see a picture of my girl? Sure. That's Chelsea. Who's that with her? Oh, that's uh, that's her bull, Tyrone. They just, well they, you know, their pronouns, they just executed someone for using the wrong gender pronouns, so. Keep your head down and stay with me and I'll, I'll, I'll show you the ropes, okay? <whistles> oh, time to go, let's go. Hello comrades, thank you for joining the Bolshevik Revolution. I'm your host, Carl the Commie. Gentlemen, thanks for coming back to the channel. Uh, this channel is a epitome of everything ridiculous in my life. We're talking about the Mosin Nagant today and I thought, um, I gave it a fun little spin on it. I was asking my buddies, I, I was thinking, hey, what's the kind of gun that you think of when you think of like, uh, the, or what kind of person do you think of when you think of the Mosin Nagant? And they all said like the Russian weeb type, but I usually think of like the poor college kid who can't afford any other gun, but they still want to buy a gun. But they're like going down the path of like um, leftist ideals. With that being said, before we dive into the gun, let's dive into the kit. The kit is just a weird amalgamation of stuff to make me look like a freedom fighter, the revolution, communist Bolshevik fighter. Uh, literally, it's just an e-tool and a bag. So knocking that out, I'm actually gonna change this jacket because it's actually hot out, so. Really excited to knock the gear out for this video so I can finally change. Listen, I know you're on the toilet watching this. Yet again, how are you so surprised that I know this? Well, because where do you think I watch my YouTube videos? So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit, leave a comment. These things weirdly do help. I always thought they were YouTube and cheesy. So today I wanted to go over the Mosin Nagant. Uh, we had a whole World War II theme going on here for the past week on the channel. Uh, <laughs> And of course, I want to keep this trend going in the future, but I managed to buy myself a cheap Mosin. And it's typically how it goes with most Mosin stories is like guys end up snagging a Mosin 
and they're like, well, I got it for like 60 bucks or I got it for a hundred bucks and they keep going up in price, but I, I found mine for cheap. I've seen them in gun stores now going for around the 300 ballpark, which is kind of a bummer because this used to be like a really fun entry gun to get into firearms. You know, we gotta think like young 18 year old kids could go to the gun store and buy a Mosin Nagant. And it's like, you get a cool history gun. Uh, you get actually a powerful caliber and it's, it's a fun little piece of history, you know what I mean? So I figured we could dive in and look at it real quick. Of course, my disclaimer, I'm no expert of history. I am no historian. I'm no expert on the Mosin. I'm not Ian McComb of Forgotten Weapons where I can tell you um, every Mosin maker's name and what was their preferred flavor of vodka. That's not my skill set. But my skill set's having a good time and we run it loose and fast here on the channel, big chimp style. Comrade, this revolution will not be fought on the classic frontier. It will be fought in the chat forums. It will be fought on the blog posts. And most importantly, it will be fought on Instagram. So with that being said, the Mosin and the Gaunt. Now this particular Mosin was made in 1937, which is kind of wild when you think of how old some of these guns are and we're still running them hard, uh, hard, hard. Um, my favorite thing about Mosins aren't necessarily their highest quality. Usually it's when dudes chop them up and bubbify them and or like make them into Obrezes. I often think of the Obrez pistol from Battlefield 1 and how bad I want one. So as this channel, you know, the life of the channel goes on, the life of this Mosin will also progress as well. I, I do have plans for this rifle. Um, either I either get another Mosin and or I just progressively chop this guy down and make it into a weird Mosin gun. That's like the best thing. I saw Iraq veteran 8888. He made like a scout rifle Mosin, which is actually pretty cool. I wouldn't mind doing something like that. His was super chop chopped down. They're running custom made sub loads. It's an older video, like a few years, I want to say. And it's really cool running suppressed. I thought that was kind of fun, like a fun little like more practical gun. Am I going to run like a modern Mosin in, in today's settings? I don't know but uh, at least I got one, so kind of fun. So he rations, who does this guy think he is? Now, of course, a bunch of these are made uh, throughout the history. It has a long lifespan uh, in conflicts, typically used in conflicts as, it started out, of course, as like the grunt gun, as most bolt actions did. And then, of course, as weapon techs advance, everyone's like, hey, this still has a huge caliber that can kill people, so throw a scope on it. So you had like the PU variants where it's like they had the uh, optic mount to the side and you can have a quick little sniper rifle set up. Mosins have claimed plenty of lives. You know, you think of anywhere from Simu Heia, the, the White Death, the fin I probably said his name wrong, but the White Death from Finland. And then you also think of um, Russian girls during World War II stacking bodies with their Mosins, so. I was kind of hesitant to make this video just because, yes, there's a lot of content already that exists on the Mose and, and there are people that can break it down so much better, but it's my channel and I like to do what I like to do and I still have fun talking about just about any gun and the Mose. The Mosin is no exception to that rule, damn it. My favorite feature of the Mosin, diving into the mechanics of the gun, hey, biomechanics, diving into the biomechanics of the gun is how easy it is to uh, get the bolt off the gun. You just pull the trigger and it comes off. Um, really fun design feature. The simplicity of the Mosin is very impressive. And I think I saw somewhere or read somewhere, and I wanna say it was almost nine whole reviews, uh, Henry, where he was talking about the Mosin and the tolerances of the Mosin. Uh, they're very loose uh, as far as bolt guns go. And I can kind of see that after running the Mauser versus running this gun. Uh, this gun, everything on it feels like loose almost. It's hard to describe, but there, it feels like a little bit spacier, a bit looser. I'm not sure if that had to do with like withstanding the winter. That's my guess. I think Henry from Nine Holes was saying something about that. Even the trigger, the trigger has a lot of play on the gun. Like you can move that trigger around a bunch before you can like, before it goes. Uh... So if you don't know how to Mosin works, if you pull the trigger, this bolt goes down, fires off the round. I was curious if we could stop it from happening if I just like hold on to it almost like a hammer. I'm kind of scared, but let's give it a shot. Ready? Oh, ha, huh, Mythbusters, it worked. This video only really exists because I wanted to meme, you know, soy boys. For Chelsea. It has some electrical tape through it on here because the, one of the rings back here was sliding forward when I was shooting. <laughs> Gun's probably seen better days. Really good bolt though. This is the first Mosin I've owned, so I'm no Mosin expert, so I'm telling you about Mosins and making a video on Mosins, but I'm not qualified. But you're still here, so it's wild. Most impressive thing about the Mosin Nagant is probably the caliber, uh, that 7.62 by 54R, and the lifespan that that caliber has. You know, where it's coming out in like the 1800s, 
and it's still in service today. Like you still see Russian boys running around with their PKMs or their Dragonovs using that caliber, which is wild. You gotta think of a lifespan of a caliber, that's pretty good. My future plans with this gun, I think as it goes on, there's some legalities and laws involved if I wanted to start chopping stuff, if you don't know that, if you have no idea how this works. So if I wanted to have this gun under 16 inches, I'd have to get a $200 tax stamp, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm paying for a tax stamp and it's already worth like more than the gun's value, which is kind of a bummer as well, but I think it might be worth it just for the memes alone. That's kind of the plan I have in the future. The plan is for this gun to get shorter and shorter. Like I want, like I want for you the next time you see this gun, I want it to be shorter maybe in some sort of carbine variant, and we chop it down. The next video will probably be like an Obrez. It's, I have goals, I have wild aspirations, and I wanna make it look ridiculous. So I figured we set the initial Mosin video, show it off uh, just real quick, make a real featurette, because it is content on YouTube, as far as Mosins go, is, is very heavily saturated, which is both good and bad, and I think that's why they're so popular in the two-way community to um, the entry-level crowd, because you hop on YouTube and all the big names have like a bunch of Mosin videos, you know. It was a lot of Hickok 45, Demo Ranch, a lot of those guys running Mosins, and they, of course, have huge, ginormous followings. So if they run Mosins, those Mosin videos get millions of views, and you have Mosins within pop culture, and it's it kind of helps drive that sales and they're super cheap so young kids going to a gun store looking to get a firearm you know back in the day probably like guys were saying hey i could snag a mosin for 60 bucks cool wham bam thank you ma'am you snag one of those ammo was cheap it's getting more expensive now <sighs> such is life i think to every gun guy the mosin has a weird place in our heart and it's like that entry level gun, you know what I mean? Like, I remember the SKS video talking about how my, uh, I would have Mosin farmers and like my, my, my SKS militia, then I'd have like my elite a AK 47 Vanguard. That was kind of like my thought problem. It's like, of course, like a very meme idea. If I was like the, the warlord, I'd have all my peasant farmers with Mosins, and in case anything arose, they could go handle it with their Mosin Nagants, right? That's kind of like the, the vibe that the Mosin gives me is that commie peasant vibes. Maybe I'll do a sniper variant. I think a sniper variant would be cooler. I want to do a hard and fast video on the Mosin. Gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm God, a God of which, who is an angry German sniper trying to kill me at Stalingrad. So all your help is appreciated. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, I have a Patreon merchandise. Those are the best ways to support the channel. As always, gentlemen, stay easy and stay breezy. Yeah.